Sarah is Miriam Smetic uh, from UPenn. She's going to tell us about constraints on standard models and F theory. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for your kind invitation to uh, to give a talk on uh, some of my prog program on uh, constructions of particle physics from string theory. Uh, it's the first time for me at this meeting, and I wish it would have been in person, but we have to deal with what we have. So uh, this is the online presentation of a program uh, that I've been pursued. Uh, just a second. Okay, that I've been pursuing uh, over a number of years, and it's focusing on a corner uh, of uh, string theory, uh, namely the uh, strongly coupled regime of type 2b string theory, the so-called F theory, uh, where we uh, are uh, pursuing construction of globally consistent, namely on compact Calabi-Yau fourfold. Uh, uh, so construction in F theory and globally consistent uh, models uh, where we would like to reproduce actually the features of the particle physics, namely both the gauge group and the matter spectrum of the standard model. And this program resulted in some first example of globally consistent three family standard models, uh, also uh, with Z2 parity, but it was really, uh, uh, reached a certain uh, highlight when we managed to explore really a broad landscape of uh, standard models in this uh, framework uh, with the exact chiral spectrum of three families of quarks and leptons. So in the recent, uh, in the past year, we also further addressed the analysis of such constructions uh, in particular, uh, uh, we are pursuing uh, uh, the techniques that would allow us to determine the precise spectrum of charge vector pairs. In particular, that would be relevant for the number of Higgs doublets, which sit as vector pairs in the standard models. And also, uh, always very important issue uh, associated with constraints on moduli stabilization. So, here I'd like to highlight actually the progress of uh, this broad landscape of uh, the stand three family standard model uh, and also uh, progress that we made in uh, addressing some of the issues of modular stabilization scenarios in this context. So uh, I outlined first a few uh, steps in constructions of uh, particle physics models in F theory, basically highlight few building blocks that we need to uh, get the spectrum, uh, matter spectrum and the gate symmetries. Uh, uh, and the techniques that we are going to explore will be actually techniques associating with the toric spaces. And uh, as a prototype, I'll highlight the first example of globally consistent three family standard models in this context. Then, as I said, I'll highlight uh, the actual uh, analysis of the landscape of these constructions, also now uh, enlarging uh, uh, the study uh, uh, and again using toric techniques. And uh, in the last part, time permitting, I'm also going to highlight some further constraints that we obtain on the features of modularized stabilization scenarios in this context. And I'll conclude with some uh, further work in progress and open issues. So the uh, key feature of F theory compactification is the study of singular elliptically fibered Calabi-Yau manifolds where the elliptic vibration, the torus has a property that its modular parameter parameterizes the strength of the string coupling. The standard prototype of such elliptic vibration is uh, parameterized by a by a Weierstrass uh, normal form, uh, which is associated with the elliptic curve that is a hypersurface constraint 
in a specific weighted projective space, P2, 2, 3, 1. So to achieve the uh, actual uh, uh, vibration that results in an elliptically fiber calabria manifold, uh, this elliptic curve is promoted into vibration over the base. And of course, both coordinates of this weight projective space, as well as coefficients f and g, become specific sections of uh, bundles uh, uh, specified by the base. So particular example of uh, compactification down to four dimension will result, of course, in Calabria fourfold, namely eight complex dimensions, and the base would be three-dimensional complex space. Now, the way we detect charge degrees of freedom in this compactification is by identifying the type of singularities that we encounter in these uh, constructions. In particular, along the divisor, which is co-dimension one in the base, okay, the, uh, uh, the, the actual uh, singular uh, divisor of that type, namely elliptic vibration along this divisor degenerates, signifies for us the appearance of uh, the seven brain, actually non-perturbative PQ seven brains. And the type of uh, singularity that uh, uh, results along this uh, divisor determines for us the nature of gate symmetry, namely it's associated with so uh, so-called ADE singularities. Uh, let me just be a, a little bit more specific. So we are talking about the, uh, the severity of singularity along a particular divisor in the base. And in the Weierstrass uh, parametrization, uh, the severity of this singularity is parameterized by the order of vanishing of F and G coefficients and its discriminant that was classified by Kodaira. So the resolution of uh, uh, the singular fiber results in a, a, a tree of P1s over this divisor. And here is an example. When we resolve, say, particular IN singularity, it results in this tree of P1s, which are in one-to-one -one correspondence with SUN thinking diagram. So the Cartan gauge bosons, in these constructions are associated uh, by uh, 1 comma 1 uh, forms, which are in one-to-one -one correspondence with this resolved P1s. And they support uh, this 1 comma 1 forms, indeed support the Cartan uh, gauge bosons in the compactified uh, theory. Uh, the way we deduce that is via actually Kaluza-Klein reduction via F theory, M theory duality. And non-abelian gauge bosons uh, emerge in this context uh, due to uh, massless, once we shrink those P1s, uh, M2 brains that wrap uh, 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 this uh, tree of P1s. So this is uh, uh, the origin of non-abelian gauge symmetries. Uh, I should mention that actually the origin of abelian gauge symmetry is different in F theory compactification. Uh, it's associated with a so called um, Mordel Bay group and sections on elliptic vibration that uniquely produce divisors that support U1 gate symmetry. But I don't have time to go into that. So the second aspect of charge degrees of freedom is associated with appearance of matter, which appear in co dimension two in the base. So when two divisors intersect, in order to achieve chiral matter, we also have to add G4 flux uh, borrowed from uh, M theory. And that is the one that then uh, essentially topologically determines the chirality of specific matter. So the particular representation of this matter again follows very similar procedure of resolution and identifying uh, the wrapping of matter curves. Um, so uh, 
with this procedure, we obtained uh, and, uh, um, better degrees of freedom, charge better degrees of freedom, uh, as well uh, as uh, their particular chir chirality. As far as Yukawa couplings go, they are associated with intersection of three divisors. So those are co-dimensional one, uh, three singularities in the base. And uh, for that, in principle, we would also want to get a handle to determine the size of corresponding Yukawa couplings. So let me now uh, uh, proceed and uh, really uh, uh, sort of outline uh, the particle physics constructions using this uh, broad strokes um, uh, description of uh, charge degrees of freedom in, in FDR compactification. So I'm going to focus on uh, really uh, concrete examples uh, where I'm going to use uh, the description both of elliptic curves as well as the base of this elliptically fiber Calabi-Yau uh, manifolds to be toric spaces. So let's start first with the elliptic curve. Uh, so the, uh, the ones, uh, the prototypes that one would choose would be using uh, examples of elliptic curves that are hypersurfaces in two dimensional toric varieties. So those are actually one complex dimension Calabi-Yau spaces. So that specifies elliptic curve. And this two-dimensional uh, no, toric varieties, which are generalizations of weighted projective space, have been classified and their data is specified in terms of 16 so-called reflexive polytopes. Now we fiber this elliptic curve over the base to get a, a Calabi-Yau space. And in this case, both coordinates of uh, of the toric varieties, two dimensional toric varieties, as well as co coefficients in the hypersurface constraints, become sections of specific line bundles of the base. It turns out that if we, we, we uh, confine ourselves to, uh, just to examples of that type of elliptic curves, it turns out that. Uh, uh, this uh, vibration uh, depends really only on a uh, finite number of divisors, uh, namely the line bundles of uh, specific divisors. Uh, so that's uh, only anti-canonical divisors and two additional divisor classes. Now, how about chirality? I said we have to turn on a uh, four forum uh, uh, flux uh, and uh, the one that is relevant for appearance of chirality is, this, is the so-called uh, vertical flux that does not in principle introduce superpotential, which at the end we would still like to include, but as a starting point it's, we focus primarily only on vertical fluxes and integration of this flux is over the corresponding meta curve specifies for us the uh, chirality. And by now we develop techniques that we both construction of this vertical fluxes as well as the explicit construction of meta cursor which we integrate, we, we really use uh, basically geometric techniques. Last but not least, which is a consequence of the fact that we are dealing with the turned on G4 fluxes, is that now geometry is not enough for consistency. We have to also cancel the D3 tadpoles that are being sourced by appearance of these G4 fluxes that we need for chirality. And the tadpole cancellation is encoded uh, also in terms of the uh, Euler number of Calabia fourfold, the flux contribution, and, sorry, oops, and, and the number of the three brains. So in order to make, have consistent, globally consistent uh, construction, we need to have the number of the three brains to be positive and integer number. And furthermore, there are non-trivial uh, constraints also on the quantization of G4 flux that we have to address as well. Anyway, let me show you a concrete example that resulted indeed in the standard model construction. It is based on a uh, elliptic curve that is hypersurface constrained in the, uh, uh, the so-called PF11 uh, 
regulatory variety. So PF11, whose polytope is encoded uh, uh, here, uh, is specified, uh, is of course P2 space with uh, four additional non-generic blow-ups. And the elliptic curve is specified with a specific hypersurface constraint, again, with this coefficient as one through as uh, seven, I think, um, uh, again, uh, being uh, uh, promoted uh, in the Calabi construction to specific sections of bundles on the base. So this is the elliptic curve. And now we proceed, we construct the Calabi fourfold. So both coefficients, SI, as well as coordinates are promoted to section of certain line bundles. Uh, and so uh, these line bundles are really specified only in terms of anti-canonical divisor, hyperplane, hyperplane divisor, and two additional classes of divisors, one associated with S7 and one with S9 coefficient itself. Anyway, this is possible to do. And now we can analyze the nature of singularities, which can, we can do just from the vibration and observe that at the locus when S3 coefficient is zero, the fiber degenerates to I2 fiber, thus corresponding to SU2 gate symmetry. S9 equals zero corresponds to the uh, I3 fiber that signifies SU3 symmetry. Now the uh, elliptic vibration, of course, is specified also by uh, uh, a rational, uh, by, by a zero section, but there is an additional rational section which uh, uh, signifies uh, via uh, Shioda map the existence of a new divisor that is associated with additional U1 gate symmetry. So the gauge symmetry generically for this vibration is there for free as SU3 cross SU2 cross U1. Then one proceeds further. Uh, in particular, it turns out that actually there is additional global constraint on this gauge symmetry, which is encoded in a particular geometric features of the U1 gauge symmetry and uh, results in additional central element that is of order C6. And as the gate symmetry, global gate symmetry is really SU3 cross SU2 cross U1 over Z6, which is geometrically determined statement. We proceed, look at good dimension two singularities, re resolve, identify meta curve and obtain representation associated with this good dimension two singularities as standard representations that signify the appearance of left hand of quarks, leptons, left and right handed quarks and leptons and uh, in the vector sector also um, uh, gauge balls, uh, he, he, uh, sorry, Higgs doublets. So this is the geometry, it guarantees this gauge symmetry. Now we have to ensure that we also get the Carroll spectrum. For that we have to turn on G4 flux, uh, but, uh, and satisfy the global consistency conditions that we have integer positive number of D3 brains. So we construct Calabiao spaces uh, in this case, but we choose very original, we choose just very simple base, just P3 space. The structure of divisors is very simple. S7, S9 classes are specified as multiples of the only divisor, uh, hyperplane divisor in this context. And we get the allowed Calabiao constructions for finite number of this integer multiples N6 and N7. So those are all the possible Calabiao fourfolds in this context. And then we turn on fluxes, satisfy tadpoles and get uh, possible solutions for number of families for particular choices of fluxes and the corresponding number of the three brains. And so you see, we got, uh, for example, in this context, a number of solutions. And what's most notable, there are two solutions with three families of uh, quarks and leptons and also uh, uh, positive, not too big, finite number of D3 brains. Well, this was pretty easy and pretty, you know, standard uh, 
application of techniques and the geometry that we have learned about F theory. So naturally one would ask oneself, is that the tip of the iceberg? Well, in this case, the answer is yes. And so I'll show you what is hiding below this iceberg. So I'll approach now by exploring the whole land landscape of three family standard models with the exact spectrum, Carroll spectrum. So again, nothing new in terms of elliptic vibration. We already got for free the gate symmetry with this global constraint. But now what we do, we choose three dimensional bases to be associated with, again with three dimensional reflective polytopes so that we can again apply the techniques of uh, toric geometry. So this three dimensional reflective polytopes have been classified and actually uh, uh, this, what, this would be the previous, just simplest P3 data and this is P2 cross P1 and many more that were classified by uh, 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 Kreutzer and Skarka. Now, each reflexive polytope still corresponds uh, 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 for each of these reflexive polytopes, we still have different bases that are associated with them. And those different bases are, uh, uh, are determined by a so-called fine star regular triangulations of the chosen polytope, which then determines for us how many different bases we have that uh, differ actually uh, from each other in terms of intersections of divisors. And that was uh, formalized and techniques uh, that were developed by uh, Batira. So we can apply this idea uh, to all those different uh, three uh, reflexive polytope. And uh, of course, uh, as the complexity of, of the polytope increases, the number of vertices increases, of course, the number of triangulation also exponentially increases. All right, so uh, now in principle, I would have many choices of the S7, S and S9 divisor classes in these constructions for all those three-dimensional polytopes. But I, here I'm gonna specialize for just a specific one. I'm gonna identify this as seven and as nine divisors to be associated with anti-canonical divisor. So the whole data now depends for each of the cases just on the uh, uh, properties uh, associated with anti-canonical divisor only. Well, as a byproduct, what one right away achieves is that the volume of the divisors uh, S3 and S9 that are associated with SU2 and SU3 gate symmetry have, uh, are also in the anti-canonical divisor class. So the gauge coupling of SU3 and SU2 is automatically unified because both are specified by the same volume. The U1 a divisor has to be calculated uh, uh, via a bit more sophisticated technique via so-called height pairing a procedure which produces for us the result that for the U1 part the, uh, the gauge coupling is also related to anti-canonical volume of anti-canonical divisor but with additional coefficient. And lo and behold this produces for us guaranteed gauge coupling unification of all three gauge group factors without having gauge group unification. So uh, it's sort of an intriguing example when we have standard models and uh, without a uh, GAD group per se and gauge coupling unification. Now, one can study actually how these models can deform and within torically connected spaces, we were able to identify that this standard model actually unhicks, you know, when we go to special points in complex structure module uh, space, we increase it to the patty salam gate symmetry. We could not find natural SU5 gut enhancement, but Taylor and collaborators actually proceeded with uh, non-toric analysis, and they also found a direction where this construction could uh, uh, unhicks to SU5 gut as well. 
All right, so now let me, how am I doing with the time? Uh, so let me continue, I think. I still have uh, time to proceed. Yeah, yeah so, 20 minutes or so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, good, so, so let me just go on. Uh, so now this, we have the gauge group, it's guaranteed, global. Uh, now we have to deal with the, uh, and we have many examples as I showed you. Now we have to make sure that we get examples with three families of quarks and leptons, and most important that the three tadpoles are uh, satisfied. And again, construction of G4 flux uh, was pursued in this context. And again, we can use uh, a rather geometric techniques for constructing the, this flux in terms of 1,1 forums that are dual to uh, Poincare dual to divisor classes in these uh, uh, spaces. And then chirality uh, and the three tadpoles for this uh, G4 fluxes along with G4 uh, integrality uh, can be expressed in, just in terms of geometric quantities, namely in terms of intersection numbers of divisors in the base. So again, these conditions at the end end up being geometric. For specific case where we have gauge coupling unification, when we choose this S7 and S9 divisor to be anti-canonical divisor, and for the time being, let me just keep number of families arbitrary and F integer number, the D3 tadpole can be written in this manifest um, geometric way. So the number of D3 uh, brains, which has to be integer positive number, is related to number of families and triple intersections of this anti-canonical divisor. So it's very geometric uh, quantity. And uh, another thing that uh, is also intriguing, it depends in this case only on triple intersection of anti-canonical divisors, which is the same for all the bases for particle polytope. So we, have, we could have many bases for particle polytope, but they all satisfy identical tadpole cancellation. So now we can proceed and determine how many bases we have that satisfy this condition, a uh, global consistency condition. And of course, we'll do that for the example of three families. We, uh, the, 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 we uh, each of these uh, 3D reflexive polytopes have a, uh, has a fixed number of, uh, for a triple intersection and, um, those are the examples that actually correspond to Tory constructions. And uh, we can proceed and determine how many triangulations we have for these examples that satisfy the tadpole condition. So for small polytopes, namely with a fewer number um, of, uh, 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 for example, uh, with the simpler structure, so, uh, uh, in this case, when we have a, a small number of lattice points, we can uh, determine this triangulation really combinatorically. And so uh, for up to 15 lattice points, we do get, uh, 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 you know, uh, around half a million standard model that's, uh, uh, that are globally consistent. But for larger polytopes, and that's where most of the models are because that in this case, um, a triangulation produces many uh, uh, bases. Uh, we had to estimate uh, this uh, number of triangulations by first counting uh, fine regular triangulations on the facets and then estimate now in the full 3D reflexive polytope how many regular fine uh, star triangulations we have. And this estimate produces for us on the order of quadrillion consistent models. So just to summarize briefly, you know, this uh, hands-on approach. Um, uh, so we choose a particular construction of standard models uh, by, uh, by, uh, with elliptic vibration specified by hypersurface in F11. And find first tip of the iceberg just for simple base and then this full triangular uh, triangulation uh, of, uh, of all possible 3D reflexive polytopes for the, uh, for the basis 
produced for us one concrete example where we also chose gauge coupling unification that produces so many models. This actually, to me, being in the field so long and working both on heterotic constructions and also weakly coupled type 2B construction intersecting brain was quite a surprising thing that the power of algebraic geometry allowed us to scan such large number of consistent models without any chiral exotics per se. That was always very much of a problem in other constructions and even examples that claim on heterotic side to have many standard models are by five, 10 orders of magnitude fewer than in this case. So it's a side thing that was quite surprising to me. All right, so in the last uh, five, 10 minutes, let me highlight for the analysis, again, using that as a prototype of a landscape of standard models. Well, the first thing one would immediately want to ask oneself is to determine the number of vector pairs. That would in particular be relevant for the case of number of uh, Higgs doublets, whether this model is really MSSM, like just one pair of Higgs doublets, but also studying whether there are any exotic vector pairs, which could also be possible. This calculations is, are much harder in algebraic geometry because they depend actually on specific choice of three forum uh, potential and not just four forum uh, field strengths. And uh, uh, they turn out to be technically very difficult, especially when the genera of the meta curves are very high. And it turns out that for the standard model, case where Higgs doublet said the genera are at least 10. So that led us actually to some partial work, which I don't have time to, uh, to, uh, to highlight concretely here, but we turn to examples of unhigs uh, case uh, of the standard model, namely looking at a Padi Salam and trying to determine the number of vector pairs there. Uh, uh, for charge matter, and we got some concrete examples, but this is not sufficient for full phenomenology of the standard model. The real price should be directly in the standard model uh, uh, constructions, and uh, we are also now employing the, uh, uh, the, the power of algebraic geometries. Uh, Rondonagi is working with us to uh, more concretely and possibly uh, over, uh, even explicitly construct uh, the jumps in number of vector pairs and how they depend on complex structure moduli, which we expect to happen as we move in complex structure moduli, we would change the number of vector pairs. So this is something that uh, we have been putting a lot of work uh, in, but we don't have specific result for this three family standard models yet. And another question one would of course want to ask is calculation of Yukawa couplings in F theory. And that very little has been done in this context. Actually, uh, last year, uh, we have attempted to do that in the global context for the toy uh, gut model where calculations were somewhat simpler because the curves were of very low genus and the calculation uh, one was able to uh, uh, proceed with calculations in such toy models. And the outcome is actually that the rank of the Yukawa couplings is bigger than, than one in this compact context, in particular because these meta curves intersect more than once and that automatically produces for us a rank of those uh, uh, Yukawa coupling matrices to be bigger than one. Uh, sort of different from the ultra local examples that one studied in the past. However, again, for the case of the standard model, this would be very hard and a uh, problem. Again, the, 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 the multiple triple intersections as well as uh, higher general of the matter curves really would make technical aspects of this calculation as uh, even just holomorphic, by the way, those are only holomorphic parts of calculations, uh, uh, quantitatively very difficult. So, I have in last few minutes, I would now like to turn to, to the other extremely important question. And as I like to refer to as usual suspects that are of course, typically not unrelated, which is the issue of modular stabilization, 
supersymmetry breaking, origin of dark matter, cosmological implications. So we have made some progress very recently in the work with uh, Cody Long, Jim Halverson, and Ling Lin, where we address the issue of how likely moduli stabilization can take place in these constructions that is of the type of KKLT or large volume scenarios. Namely, what we want to look at is this, the standard proposals for moduli stabilization in the context of these constructions, where we would have, of course, this example has gauge coupling unification, uh, and the realistic gauge coupling of MSSM uh, that is parameterized by this single anti-canonical divisor. Uh, on the other hand, we also have to make sure that all possible other divisors in this construction, as, as well as complementary curve volumes, are bigger than one in string units, namely that we can trust the standard classical calculation and that the uh, Volsheet instanton, non perturbative uh, contributions of Volsheet instanton or uh, the three brain instantons are suppressed. So this is like a standard attempt to see whether such scenarios are viable in these constructions. For that case, we have to make sure that all the 1,1 moduli are really now um, um, are associated with large volumes. Namely, they should sit in so-called stretch killer classes. And this is like an example of determining the, um, the actual volume of the street uh, for a particular example of those street, uh, stretch killer cones. And uh, what we have to focus on is on examples where this volume now of anti-canonical divisor in this stretch killer cone is associated with the small value so that we are compatible with gauge coupling unification. And we see that actually very small part of them satisfy that regime. And out of this quadrillion models, only subset of around 10 to the four sit in the domain of a stretch killer cone uh, for which uh, we also have a realistic uh, minimal supersymmetric uh, model gauge coupling unification. So uh, this clearly poses um, another issues. If we want to stick to this proposal and explore it further, clearly we have to uh, 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 ask ourselves that the other part of this huge uh, landscape uh, uh, should be explored by different methods of modular stabilization since the standard one really are not satisfied. Of course, this is extremely difficult since this involves non-perturbative effects uh, that uh, have been really explored in very, very few cases. Again, technically very difficult thing. Okay. Last but not least, um, uh, I showed you a prototype and surprisingly got a huge landscape and some further quantitative analysis that we can do there. But there is clearly a big space of exploration of other standard model constructions within F-theory context that typically could lead us now also to additional D7 dark sector. Recall, I did not have any additional D7 uh, 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 gauge symmetries in this original constructions, but most of other constructions, and if we want to stick still to somewhat more standard modulus uh, stabilization scenario, may, may force us uh, to, uh, to deal with uh, different divisors for standard model gauge group, but then also introducing additional D7 dark sector. But I hope to report on some of that progress at some of the future meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Now we have time for questions. You can just, um, if you can please unmute yourself and ask a question. Or you can also use the raise hand feature and the chart feature. And then Miriam can see you, your raised hand and your chat question. Yeah, let me just see chat. Uh... So far, no questions in the chat, but. Um... Okay. 
So people yeah. can unmute themselves and ask a question. We strongly encourage questions. Hi Miriam, it's me, Josef Bena from France. Hi. Oh yes, hi Josef. I had a question. You have all these uh, mobile D3 brains, 56 of them. You have an SU56 living on them. How do you plan to get rid of that? Because in the standard model, you don't have such piece. Uh, you, you mean uh, 36 of them? 36, well, sorry, yeah. Yes, all, the, all the D3 brains that you need for the tadpole. Yeah, perfect. So the point is, first of all, you know, good things first. They're positive, finite, and then not too many. Of course, of course, <laughs> of course. Yeah, there are many, and now the issue becomes really after modular stabilization. Do they get attracted to the D7 brain, or can we put them, stabilize them away from the standard model sector of D7 brains? If, so this is the issue of modular stabilization for those D7 brain, D3 brains. Uh, but on the other hand, you know, this D3 brains naturally provide for us also a, in principle, a genuine hidden sector that could be relevant, you know, for the racetrack scenario or possible other uh, gauge dynamics effects that could break supersymmetry. But I have not addressed really uh, stability and namely whether we can stabilize them away from the D7 brains. Clearly a subject that Cody and uh, Liam and, and others, you know, uh, <laughs> should should put and, and as well as us should put extra effort in i hope i answered that uh, that we no, don't no, i didn't know i mean i didn't know if you had if, if, if you had had already done it or it's, if it's on the, in, in the works uh, it's in the works it's thinking about it i, I don't have a concrete uh, yeah concrete answer for that but mm -hmm. clearly it's, it's an issue that we we have to pursue thanks mm -hmm. more questions please Uh, is there uh, maybe a chat too, or uh, so I don't know. Yeah, I can see the chat, so if I know questions in the chat. Uh, let me ask okay. one question. So this coupling unification yeah. that you had, right? Yes, one. Is there some other point in the modular space where you actually have the SU5 symmetry, or is there is no point where you have Yes, it? so let me say that, uh, yes, so, so that was a, uh, within toric, you see when we, we are in the toric space, so we can trace complex structure moduli in this context. And as I said, you know, we see the, uh, the Padi Salam model emerging in the toric deformation. Now, uh, uh, Turner and Taylor actually pursued geometric analysis via just Weierstrass parameterization. Uh, trying to see, you know, whether this particular standard model construction can be unhixed beyond toric techniques to SU5. And they have found a path to unhixed version, but it's non-toric. I have to get out of the toric space to get to SU5 unhixed version. So at least geometrically, they argue that it's possible, but not within our context when, when we stick strictly uh, to bases that are toric. So that's the, uh, the story at this point. Uh, so SU5 is possible. So this construction could be uh, 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 unhixed uh, to SU5. Uh, I should point out that, you know, we stumble over this elliptic vibration, Taylor and, uh, 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 and, and Andrew uh, yeah, uh, have, have pointed out that actually um, uh, this is pretty much unique. If I want the construction of the standard model without chiral exotics or unusual representation, this vibration is a unique vibration in the, um, uh, in the F-theory constructions. So I, I could just add, over, but it's actually yes. Yeah, I'll just add a comment uh, elaborating on what you just said yes, here. Nice talk. Um, yeah, so, yeah. So with with uh, Andrew and then also with Nikhil Raghuram, we explored the as yes. you said this general question of if we try to write down a virus for us model that realizes SU three cross SU two mod Z six, and it turns mm -hmm. out that based on very general arguments, there are sort of two branches of that construction, and one of them is exactly the toric model that with the F eleven fiber that Miriam described, and then there's a second class which is in some sense larger, but also has some exotics. So, and, and the one that they were looking at, as she said, does have that SU5 structure, um, as she said, anyway. 
Right, thank you for repeating more eloquently what I tried to say. <laughs> okay. More questions, let's see. Are there more questions? Please just unmute yourself and ask a question. I don't, I don't see any other questions. If, there's no, if there are no more questions, let's thank uh, Miriam again. Thank you. Thank you really for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so what we're going to do, we're gonna, I'm going to leave the meeting on. And if people want to chat, they can go ahead and chat.